<sighs> Hello, my lovely Padawans, and welcome to a video about a thing I've been waiting to happen for a while now. As you've probably read in the video title, today I'm going to talk about and do a slight analysis of the new Yu Gi Oh! TCG ban list that is going to come in effect from August 29th, 2016. So I'm recording this on the 25th and will upload it on the 25th. So you guys have like four days to enjoy the game of Yu Gi Oh! as it is with all the broken meta decks because. When the ban list hits, many many things will change. Right, so I'm not gonna talk about the entire ban list, I will only talk about the new added cards, the new changed cards, and whatever. And the first card we begin with is, a mon is an effect monster called Performer Pow Monkey Board, which used to be limited, which means only one copy per deck allowed. And now it's forbidden. AKA banned, AKA forever alone. Uh, that way, uh, that card is very, very good for any performer power deck, any performer power engine, and with it gone, things are gonna go very, very, very badly for the performer power deck users. Uh, just so you don't know, if you don't know what performer power monkey board does, you know, it has a monster and a pendulum effect. So it's a level six. Earth Monster, which is a scale 1 pendulum, uh, pendulum scale 1. Uh, so its effect state, unless you have a performer power card in your other pendulum zone, this card's pendulum scale becomes 4, which is broken as it is. During your main phase, if this card was activated this turn, you can add one level 4 or lower performer power monster from your deck to your hand, uh, and you can only use this effect of performer power monkey board once per turn. So that's a very, very good scale pendulum effect uh, and his uh, more, uh, more monster effect is you, you can discard this card to reveal one performance power or all dice monster in your hand and if you do reduce the level of, of monsters in your hand with that name by one for the rest of the turn so that's, that's gonna, that, can, that can be used for many things like synchro plays, xyz plays and whatever so we're done with Perform Power <laughs> Monkey Board. The next card on the list, which is a, a new one added, is Kaiser Colosseum. So if you don't know, Kaiser Colosseum is a very neat continuous spell card. And if you didn't know what it does, here's what it does. If there's one or more monsters on the field of the controller of this card, his or her opponent cannot place a monster on the field if his or her number of monsters would exceed the number of monsters that are on the field of the card's controller. The cards that are already on the field before this card's activation are unaffected by this effect. So basically, if it's your first turn and you draw Kaiser Colosseum and you can summon at least one strong monster, you can activate Kaiser Colosseum, summon your strong monster and your opponent cannot do flipping monster spa summoning spams like Rank 4 spams, rank 2 spams, uh, pendulum spams, you name it, nothing. They can only have one monster, if you have one monster. If you have two monsters, then they can have two monsters. Which is like limiting their number of monsters according to yours. Which is a, a pendulum killer, a, a monster spam killer. It was a, a, a pretty, pretty strong card. And now it's banned. <laughs> so... No more Kaiser Colosseum, at least in this ban <laughs> in the new ban list. So the next card uh, that used to be semi-limited, which means two copies per deck, was Sir Mail Branch or Sir Mail, Mail Branch of the Burning Abyss. Uh, it's one of the Burning Abyss cards. It's not the most broken one. I think they should have hit Farfa. Uh, unfortunately, they did not. Uh, but we have this now at limited, so from 2 goes to 1. Uh, basically, this is a Burning Abyss card, as I said. It can be used in any Burning Abyss deck or PK Fire or whatever. Basically, it's part of current, like in this ban list, meta decks. Uh, so, it's a level 3. All of, all, of the, all, all of the BA cards are level 3. It's a Fiend, and if you control a monster that is not a Burning Abyss monster, you can destroy this card. You can only activate one of these effects of, Sir, of Seer Mail Branch of the Burning Abyss per turn, 
and only once that turn. So one of uh, his effects are, if you control no spell or trap cards, you can special summon this card from your hand, which is already broken. So it, basically this this first effect can allow you to get Dante uh, at turn 1, which is, you know, what BA does. And then you can go easily to Beatrice and whatever. Uh, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one Burning Abyss monster in your graveyard, accept the male branch of the Burning Abyss, and special summon it. So you, it can it can recycle dead Burning Abyss monsters. So that's, you know, not gonna happen as much as it is now, because you can only have only one source in your deck. The next one is... I just cannot describe how happy I am about them, about Konami hitting the Monarch's deck. Ether, 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 I don't know how it's, uh, let's call it Ether, Ether the Heavenly Monarch is now added into the ban list and it is limited. So it, it, it goes from 3 to just 1. So that's gonna make Monarchs, so that's not, I'm, I'm gonna say it right off the bat, that's not the only Monarch card that's being hit, but it's this and just uh, two or three others and Monarchs are dead in TCG. Officially, they're dead. So, Ether the Heavenly, <coughs> the Heavenly Monarch is one of the two main Monarch cards. Um, uh, basically, it's a uh, level, what is it, level 8 monster. Uh, and its effect is that you can tribute summon this card by tributing one tribute summon monster. If this card is tribute summoned, you can send two Monarch spell trap cards from, uh, spell trap cards from, uh, with different names from your hand or deck to the graveyard. And if you do, you can special summon one monster with 2400 or more attack and a thousand defense, which means any other monarch, uh, <coughs> like the normal, uh, the, the regular monarchs uh, from your deck, but return it to the hand during the end of the phase, so it can recycle monsters. You can just get monsters from your deck to the field, then to your hand, so basically that's like super broken draw power. So, during your opponent's main phase, if this card is in your hand, you can banish one monarch, spell or trap card from your graveyard, and immediately after this effect resolves, tribute summon this card, this is a quick effect, so it can easily be spammed because Monarch decks use a, they use a lot of spare and traps, and you can just spam, spam, spam others, and spam, spam, spam other shit, and it just doesn't stop. But now it's only one copy per deck, and <laughs> happy fun time. So the next one is on the Cosmo side of things. It's the only Cosmo card that's been hit, but it's <laughs> it's a big one. It's the Cosmo Dark Destroyer card. It's like it's a card that many other little little tiny bitty itsy bitsy Cosmo cards can special summon in the numbers. Uh, so it goes from three to one. It's a machine, obviously. Uh, it's a spaceship. <laughs> but if this card is normal or special summon, which is it's it's, it's basically or or only special summon, um, you can target one monster on the field, destroy it. So yeah, like just like that, you can. Oh, Pop, you can special summon Darkness right from your hand. Boom! Like, yeah, okay. Uh, and it cannot be targeted by an opponent's card effect. Okay. So you can just destroy by battle then. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard. And there it is. Special summon one, seven, one level 7 or lower Cosmo monster from your deck. So, no matter if it dies, it will still be replaced by something else in the Cosmo Cancer um, group, you know. And the star of this ban list, the new, one of the new added to the ban list cards, Magus Specter Unicorn Kirin. It goes from 3 to 1. And you know what that means, fellas? That means that Magus Spectres will die, because without having Unicorn at 3, you know, having that confidence that you can d draw another one, even if your first one gets destroyed, it will shatter, it will shatter the, <laughs> the life of the Magus Spectre users. So basically what Magus Spectre Unicorn Kirin does, it does not have a scale, uh, a pendulum uh, scale effect. It is a level 6 wind monster spellcaster scale 2. That's okay. But it's monster effect. During either, and this is where the, the idiocy is that Konami has created with this card, during 
either player's turn. So if it was during your turn, or once, once per turn, once your turn, it would be okay. But during either player's turn, you can target one pendulum monster in your monster zone. And one monster your opponent controls, return them to the hand. So basically it can bounce and bounce and bounce as many cards as you, as you want, as long as you have other Magic Spectre, Pendulum or just normal or any Pendulum monsters on your field. You can bounce the strongest monsters, unless of course they cannot be targeted by an effect, you know. You can only use this effect of Magic Specter Unicorn Kirin once per turn, but that that is plenty. I mean that's plenty. You can still use it on your turn, on your opponent's turn, and then back on your turn, and you can bounce and bounce and bounce whatever you want. It cannot be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effect, so you have to kill it by battle, and your opponent will do anything to protect it. So this card going down to one is making me Horny. <laughs> I'm not joking here. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. Uh, emergency teleport. Uh, it goes down from 2 to 1. It basically allows you to special summon 1 level 3 or lower a psychic type monster from your hand or deck, but banish it during the end of this turn. So it basically allows you to summon a level 3 tuner. That's what people use it uh, for fast, uh, you know, for, for the fast synchro stuff. It's not that widely used so but they but I still but decided to go and limit it the next card is another monarch card and it's called pantheism of the monarchs it's newly added to the ban list it's a spell card regarding you know a spell card for the monarch archetype and here's what it does you send one monarch spell or trap card from your hand to the graveyard then you draw two cards okay that's that's already broken. Uh, you can banish this card from your graveyard to reveal three monarch spell or trap cards from your deck. Then your opponent chooses one for you to add to your hand and you shuffle the rest back into your deck. And you can only use this effect of Pantheism of the Monarchs once per turn. So basically this card is the search engine of the monarchs, right? Uh, and it being at 3 was obnoxious and annoying as fuck. And now it being to 1, well, people are not just going to bother playing Monarchs anymore. <laughs> uh, the next card is, again, a card that's going to hit the Pendulum thingies. And especially the Pendulum Magicians. It's the newly added to the list and now limited Pendulum Call. And here's what it does. You discard a card to add two Magician Pendulum Monsters with different names from your deck to your hand. Also, until the end of your opponent's next turn after this card resolves, Magician cards in your Pendulum Zones cannot be destroyed by card effects. That's fucking retarded. Anyway, uh, you can only activate one Pendulum Call per turn. You cannot activate this card if you activate it, a Magician's Monster's Pendulum Effect this turn. So basically that's a huge searcher. If you don't have enough s scales or monsters in your first turn, you can just activate this and get more monsters, different ones, to set your scales, to spam those monsters, to do shit, and of course they cannot be destroyed for a, a turn or so, which is all, also very broken, but yeah, this card going down to 1 is gonna slow down the Pendulum Magicians a lot. So the next card is also a Monarch card, which was newly added, and it's a, it's a card that, that's like, oh, you have a monster on your field, and oh, I have a monster that requires one tribute to be summoned, and oh, why don't I use my Monarch Stormthorpe? To use your monster for as a tribute to summon my monster on my field. Like, okay. Once during <coughs> once during this turn, if you would tribute summon, if uh, tribute a monster or monsters you control for a tribute summon, you can tribute one op monster your opponent controls as if you controlled it. You can only activate one the Monarch Stormforth per turn. During the turn you activate this card, you cannot special summon monsters from your extra deck. Which doesn't bother the Monarchs, because like 89% of the Monarch uh, um, builds 
don't give a fuck about extra deck and they don't use an extra deck. So basically, you want to special, you want to tribute summon one of your big big ones that require uh, two summons or three summons or th or whatever, and you can just use an additional monster from your opponent's field, which is ridiculous. <clears throat> now another newly and probably the last newly added card to the list is Max C. Now this is a card that a lot of people use. Uh, it's a situational card. Basically what it does is that during either player's turn you can send this card from your uh, hand to the graveyard. This turn, each time your opponent special summons a monster or monsters, immediately draw one card and you can only use one maxi per turn. Basically that was that was very useful if you were playing against a, a person who was using a deck that relies on heavy summoning like a, a rank for summoning XYZs Synchro summons, pendulum summons, so for each one month, one summon or some months, because let's say uh, one, <coughs> because uh, let's say uh, that uh, a pendulum summon of between one to five monsters, no, uh, that that uh, that counts as just one draw, but basically it's a free draw, uh, and people just use it in their opponent's turn if they just sense that they're gonna try, they're gonna start and massively summon shit. And then they just get the draws, and then they have a lot of cards to work with on their next turn. So I don't know why Konami did this, but it's now semi-limited. So it goes from from three to two, which is uh, uh, I mean, not many people use three maxis in their deck, and most of the people use just one. And I don't know more for me, three is way too cloggy. So two is okay, and one is just perfect, you know. Then ne the, the next card on the on the list, which was that which used to be semi, uh, sorry, limited, which means one, uh, it goes up to semi limited, which means two, and that is the Thunder King Ryo. <coughs> it's a, an older card, but it's a useful one. Uh, basically. What its effect is that neither player can add cards from their deck to their hand except by drawing them, which is good. You know, that stops crazy draws. You know, as long as it is on your field. Uh, or, or on your opponent's field. Then during either player's turn, when your opponent would special summon a monster, you can send this face-up card to the graveyard, negate the special summon, and destroy it. So, yeah. Now you can have two of those, which is... Okay, I like Thunder King Ryo. I try to implement him as, in as many decks that I have as possible. So yeah, I'm kind of happy about that one. The next one, which used to be limited and now semi-limited, so, so it goes from one to two, was Wind Up Magician, uh, and this is a card I honestly have never seen, simply because Wind Up the with the Wind Up archetype is bad. So. This is a level 4 fire spellcaster, and if the effect of a wind up monster is activated except wind up magician, you can special summon one level 4 or lower wind up monster from your deck as a face up defense position. This effect can only be used once while this card is face up on the field. So basically, this is gonna make this is gonna bring a sort of bring back or uh, just reintroduce windups to the rank four dot deck, um, you know, niche, which isn't which, which isn't a very small niche at all. <laughs> uh, so we we might see some windups, but eh, just the rank four spam deck, like you know, get as many rank four monsters as you can on the field, then X Y Z summon or or synchro summon or whatever, but mainly X Y Z summon. And then the next the next card is. A very very old fusion monster, which we were kind of uh, expecting to get some changes about it, and that is the Thousand Ice Restrict, which used to be limited, which means one, and now it's no longer on the list, which means you can have up to three of these motherfuckers. <laughs> and if you all remember, Pegasus used to you use this card in his duels against in his final duel against Yugi. In the dual kingdom, but I'm talking about a time so far away from now in the f in the past. So basically, this is a fusion monster, which needs to be fusion summoned using 
Thousand Eyes Ida, which is a normal monster, and Relinquished, which is a ritual monster. <laughs> and here's its effect. As long as this card remains face up on the field, other monsters cannot change their battle positions or attack. You can select one monster on your opponent's side of the field and equip it to this card. This effect can only be used once per turn and you can only equip one monster at a time to this card. The attack and defense of this card become the same amount as the monster equipped to this card. If this card is destroyed as a result of battle, the equipped monster is destroyed instead. So basically, we might see a lot of Thousand Dice Restrict Shenanigans because it's not a bad card. Yes, it has a kind of a difficult uh, way of being summoned because if one of its materials is, you know, um, <laughs> a ritual monster, but you can probably do other things like uh, uh, Elemental Hero Prisma or uh, that Swamp King or whatever, you know, you can do a lot of shenanigans. Uh, then we have Allure of Darkness, which is a, a draw power card. Uh, it goes from semi limited to no longer on the list which means it goes back to 3. It's pretty straightforward. You draw 2 cards and remove from play one dark monster from your hand. If you don't have any dark monsters in your hand to remove, send all your cards in your hand to the graveyard. It's simple. And the last card that was changed in this ban list is the Gold Sarcophagus, which used to be at 1 and now it's no longer on the list, which means 3. It is an easy card to use and understand and it has a purpose and use in many many decks. You just banish one card from your deck, any card face up, any card that you need, you just banish it from the deck face up and during your second standby phase after this activation that card goes to your hand. So you can get a monster or trap or, 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 or spell or whatever that you need and you need fast and that's the way to go. And yeah I hope you enjoyed this review slash analysis of the new ban list. I will see you in my next video, my lovely Padawans. And until then, may the force be with you.